well, this is a real person, I guess. It's me from 1994. I'm in my mid-30s here. And it's too bad we all can't stay at this age, right? I look horrible now. <laughs> and I suppose you can just freeze this if you're curious and want to laugh. I'm going back to this guy for a few more minutes, if you don't mind. And I guess part of it is also because my older self now is changing into something beyond what we might expect from the normal aging process. It's a kind of healthy, <laughs> natural transition brought about by some unusual circumstances. And I'll be picking up with this theme a bit later. The real point, though, is that in order to be candid and authentic, it wouldn't be right not to provide a name. So I will. Mark Vold Nichols. There's only one person in the United States with that full name. This has been convenient for me at times, but whether it represents anything unique or truly authentic is another question. In fact, in reality, it's just as pointless as this photograph is pointless. You can call a person anything. I would prefer to be called Your Honor, <laughs> which makes a lot more sense given how this older self of mine is headed for a place where that's exactly what he will be called. The person you see here doesn't exist anymore. Every cell has been replaced. And I'm going to return to this theme as well, repeatedly, because it has to do with communicating honestly in the first person, so-called, and in a way that's believable, and also from a particular point of view. For now, uh, the name is correct, for whatever that's worth, and my point of view is carrying over from nine previous video segments that were titled differently for a private website, but in fact are also the beginning portion of this JRM series, one through nine. They can't be shown in their current form, at least not yet, because they deal with a sensitive, ongoing legal matter. It's just that the whole business of it has been so trying, so disappointing, and so revealing that it's actually pushed me into doing something that otherwise for me is very unnatural. That's this, uploading a video. I've posted music before on YouTube, but not something where I'm talking about various topics, current events, and uh, referencing actual crimes committed by public officials that only a few people know about and that I believe I exposed in great detail with evidence to back it up. So I guess uh, in this sense it's journalistic, but the truth is I'm not so sure I even know what the hell this really is. It's almost like uh, trying to imagine the character of Captain Queeg from the Kane Mutiny when he noticed the looks he was getting after explaining how he solved the mystery of the strawberries with geometric logic. The only difference here, though, is that there was logic. There is objective truth based upon it. And there was, and still is, a lot more going on with a lot more at stake than strawberries. It's like these school shootings that we see and the Second Amendment. You have a right to bear arms, but nothing says it can't be defined. In fact, there's an obligation to define it. You can own uh, single-shot pistols and rifles and be thankful there's no limit on the number. And that's the end of it. Your military and law enforcement, note the word your, as in you, an extension of you, those organizations will have advanced weaponry to protect you. That's you protecting you. Because that's how it works in a civilized democracy. Unless, of course, you're not civilized. In a domestic revolution, 
if that ever became necessary. There would be factions, as there always are in those situations. So that argument is a non-starter. Civility is where it starts. If you're not civilized, you're mentally ill. And the last thing we need is to have the mentally ill citing mental illness as the problem. We don't need mentally ill people writing books about mental illness. That's a whole other thing I'm going to get into. Rotten values ruling with money, power, luck, privilege, hypocrisy, and self-entitled righteousness. It's enough to make a sane person want to spit or maybe even transition <laughs> into something else. The problem is not the message or the messenger, even if it is coming from a nervous, incompetent Captain Quig type or a judgmental, competent Captain Bly type or just a crying parent with a gunned down child. It's the insanity itself. That's the problem. This is why whenever you're in a position where you're expressing something that you know will be ignored because of that insanity, there is a tendency, <laughs> at least I feel this way, to want to offer a disclaimer showing that you know it yourself, that it will not only be ignored, but it won't even reach one ear to go out another. It's like all of this online content. It's mostly just entertainment and distraction. Nobody really gives a damn about anything real and important. So people need to see that you get it, that you're not hopelessly naive and full of yourself, and that you're really only doing it for yourself, even if you're still hoping that someone might learn from it or at least get something out of it. You may not even be aware of whether or not you're losing your mind, you know? Forget Captain Quig. It's more like turning into a kind of Colonel Kurtz character, talking to yourself. But what you do know is that there's no law against it, and you're not interested in harming anyone, even the elitist criminals and their credulous, ignorant enablers. Just the opposite. So that's what this is, and it's also fair warning because I do have a remarkable ability to be rather crude and insulting. I never mean for it to be impetuous without some higher purpose, but sometimes the truth makes certain demands and it can't be helped. I think it was Mark Twain who said some people should be offended. And besides, the last time I checked, his real name was Samuel Clemens. He did some journalism as Mark Twain. And as far as I know, we all still have the right to free speech in this country. Now, this is not to say that certain kinds of speech shouldn't be restricted if people are engaging in something hateful or threatening in a way that incites others into disorder and or violence. No one would deny that whole thing about fire in a crowded theater. This goes for everyone including presidents, by the way, especially presidents, <laughs> jail, no golf, no second terms, no third or fourth impeachments, just jail, okay? What the hell? The problem is how there are so many layers of hypocrisy and how there's such a slippery slope on all of this stuff. Gun nuts talk about a slippery slope, but you know what a real one is? Humor. Humor goes out the window when people are ignorant and too sensitive. And then on top of that, there's just the way technology has been exacerbating everything. It takes a thick skin to live in a democracy. And it's the same way with art in general. There's a big difference in the way art looks in a democracy as compared with a psychopathic dictatorship. So I'm going to uh, push back a bit on what I see as a retraction and reversion into prudery, which I have to say is sort of amazing considering how some people that I knew a long time ago would have thought of me as being too conservative and rigid. 
The fact is, there's no escaping from the way public discourse always has to be regulated voluntarily by community standards derived from ethics, rationality, courtesy, and common sense, no one of which should be dictated by an overlord, which is to say, one particular conception of absolute morality, especially one that would not only be religious but also political. Otherwise, life itself starts looking very bleak, sort of like that uh, vicious circle that plagued Lenny Bruce in his legal battles in a court with a stupid judge. Decorum, of course, is absolutely essential, especially in a courtroom, and Bruce may or may not have been able to wrap his mind around that, but at the same time, it really is very true that life is not a courtroom, nor is it a church. Those things are just aspects of life. And if you care to listen further, you'll see how this drives most of what I'm doing here. Stupid judges and stupid churches and the damage they've done. I guess it's a problem I have with authority. <laughs> I've always detested the idea of the police being like an armed clergy. It also goes to some core part of my personality that is probably the result of having been influenced a lot by experimental music. People like John Cage, minimalists like Lamonte Young, or uh, on a more popular level, George Harrison, Mike Binder, Donovan Leach, <laughs> guys like that who were musicians, but they also had something they needed to express in their art, even if it did sometimes come off as pretentious. Rupert Spira is another one, although he's known more for being a potter. But the point is, they're not exactly what we'd describe as public intellectuals. They're artists. And I relate to this, although in my case, I'm not as much um, of an artist as I am a kind of working class person who appreciates art. What I may say or do, I mean, you know, <laughs> it might seem ridiculous and very shallow, but it's also deceptive. And it is musical, <laughs> albeit simplistic. It's like watching a pseudo-intellectual clown perform and not being quite sure of where it's coming from. And if you cross that clown with an asshole, you get what could be described as a clown hole. <laughs> There's nothing original about the style. I know that. You know, I mean, it's what we see all over the internet. But it's still something where some effort made to assess its real value might be wise. If it has no worth at all, well, you know, so be it. Everything is upside down anyway, so no surprises there. Now, Rupert Spira, on the other hand, uh, is just the opposite. He doesn't require much effort if you can get past your own jadedness and cynicism, and if you have a brain. <laughs> that rules out most of the population. But apparently, uh, there are some exceptions. He turned himself into a talker and a teacher, which is unusual for an artist. It must come from that precision you have to have on the potter's wheel. You also have to be introspective, creative, and verbal. You need to derive satisfaction from interacting with people and being, you know, <laughs> that center of attention. And you actually have to care about helping them, to teach them something. So, uh, you know, there, there is a little ego there, a touch of vanity. But uh, it's no big deal. All artists are vain in one way or another. It's also consistent with how mystics can be troublemakers. Jesus of Nazareth was like that. Martyred three times over, once by his own people and the Romans, 
then by the apostles, who didn't quite get the point, and then by the Catholic Church that wrote the books of the Bible and invented an impossible religion that Jesus himself wouldn't recognize, which is also why if he came back today, he wouldn't be a Christian. I can think of some people who already were here and lived their whole lives, some others who are back now or are simply here, however you want to define it, they just haven't been as influential as the one we call Jesus. But of course they don't have to be. The universe doesn't sit still. It does what it does, and the human race will get to wherever it's going, or it won't. You see, this is why I'm a little more like the Chinese philosopher Yang Shou, who said, he wouldn't sacrifice one hair off his head to save the whole human race. <laughs> so, you know, uh, we're all a mixed bag. It takes all kinds. Musicians are probably somewhere in the middle, at least performing musicians. It's not something generally that you do alone, and it requires tremendous skill and precision. I'm tempted to say Hitler was like this as an artist, but that might be giving him too much credit, since he seemed to be driven more by his view of himself as an artist, along with all sorts of other demons, rather than just being artistic. In this sense, he was more like an anti-artist. Think of the difference between someone like Jackson Pollock and Adolf Hitler. Pollock was pure, nonverbal, expressionist passion. It was physical but it wasn't internalized and repressed. It wasn't a quest for power, but more like a fireworks display of self-destruction. A lot of artists are like that. And by the way, I don't mean to suggest that artists who are not nonverbal are to be compared directly with Hitler. It's just that they sort of prefigure what I'm doing here. I like Rupert Spira for example, because he's exactly my age. I don't even really know all that much about him. Apparently there was some uh, long training in Vedanta alongside his ceramic art. Maybe he's just the next guy to hop onto a passing comet. <laughs> totally nuts for all I know. But I have to say, I like his style. He uses these long pauses, and usually there's a flower beside him on a table. Man, I wish I could do that. <laughs> but as you can see, it doesn't really work. And it doesn't matter how long I pause. You see that? It just doesn't matter. I'm an idiot. But look, the recycling of mysticism doesn't bother me because he got his from all the same sources where I got mine. It's a little do-over of Jiddu Krishnamurti, but that's fine. It's um, different and somewhat distinct from Deepak Chopra, who for some reason has always tended to annoy me. And this is no offense to Mr. Chopra, I'm sure he's a nice guy. It's just that he bugs me a bit, <laughs> maybe in the same way that Jimi Hendrix was always so bemused by the preposterous reality of having to be an opening act for the monkeys. <laughs> I seem to appreciate Chopra's writing more than his public appearances, whereas it seems to be the opposite with Spira. Come to think of it, maybe what I'm really trying to do here is to describe the difference between someone like Thomas Merton and Alan Watts, both of whom had very different personalities and were also born in the same month and year. But again, they don't quite fit the bill either because they were known people living in a much different and much less threatening time. Not just some little frog croaking in the wilderness. That said, I am going to croak. Just a little croaking here before the big croak as it were. That was easy. <laughs>